Hello mate, welcome back. In this video we're going to expand on what we've done in the series so far. So one of the things that we need to add is we need to add a conditional statement here in our main UI. And what we need to do is say if tip underscore screen and we're going to say use tip screen and in there we're going to say tip underscore text nice and easy now what we need to do is define these two variables so we're going to come into our variable defines and we're going to say default tip underscore screen equals false and we're going to say default tip text i've got to remember how i spelled that variable let's just grab that control c Control V equals, and then we're just going to say this is the tip screen. Thanks. Dot dot dot. Cool. So that's those two variables created there. So the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to create the uh, tooltip screen. Let's do that one next. So we come back to our main UI and we can say our tooltip screen is going to appear after the button screen but we want it to appear above the uh, background image and the buttons and the characters when we create the character screen but we are not really bothered if it appears below the tip screen so what we'll do is we'll say here use tooltip screen and then we're going to copy this like so and then in our screens folder we're going to create a new file I'm going to call this tool tip screen dot rpy and then we're just going to go screen control v like that happy day so that's the screen created now we need to populate it with some stuff and this is a really simple screen we're simply going to say if tt dot value is not the same as nothing in other words don't display the screen if there's nothing there and then we're going to say frame and I'm going to give it an X align of 0.5 and I'm going to give it a Y pause of about 85. Then we're going to create a V box, V box, not a V books. And inside that V box, we're going to say text and we're going to refer to our fonts again. So we're going to say uh, font equals GUI forward slash fonts forward slash gothic dot TTF and then we're going to say tt.value in square brackets. So that's going to print the text. I'm going to say color is going to be hash FFF. Uh, what have I done wrong there? Ah, that's silly. Ah, there we go. Let's remove that. And uh, we're also going to say uh, outlines. zero comma hash zero 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 comma zero comma zero I haven't actually got any but it just gives us the option later on size I'm going to say 18 bold it's going to be false cool so that should pretty much be it for our tooltip screen now when we hover over any item in the game we're going to get a tooltip of what it is and the tooltip will read whatever we have put into this bit here so if we were to hover over a picture of our sofa we haven't actually given ourselves a jpeg of that yet or a png file but if we were to hover over the opaque pixels we would see comfy leather sofa appear at the top of the screen which is cool so I think the next thing we want to do is we're going to actually we're going to create an asset for our game we're going to create a PNG file or a JPEG file that we're going to use as our top bar. So what I've done here is I've opened Photoshop and I've created a new file and it is 1920 pixels across by 48 pixels down. It's just an arbitrary number really for the depth. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlock that layer and I'm going to turn it off its visibility. I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to go for a, do you know what? I'm going to use a brush tool. I'm going to make my brush a wee bit smaller. And I'm going to do kind of a 
really subtle. It has to be fairly, because I'm going to drop the opacity of the layer. I just want to make sure that it's not too much of an over the top effect. So we need really black at the ends and then slightly less black coming into the middle. And then I'm going to drop the opacity of this layer right down to, I know, let's see, maybe 50%. That'll work for me. And then we'll export that into our games file structure and then we'll use it for the next screen that we're going to create which is going to be our top bar screen so we'll come into our screens to rpy folder our screens folder again create a new file this one's just going to be called top bar.png and uh, nope not png sorry yeah rpy got png on the brain and so we're going to create a screen top bar screen and then all we're going to do is we're going to add a UI, which is the folder that I created for this. And we're going to call this topbar.png. And that's, oh, I spelled that wrong, didn't I? Topbar.png. And that's all we're going to do for now. We are going to add some button functionality to this later on. But right now, we want to focus on our uh, other items in this game. So the last thing that we're going to work on in this episode is we're actually going to create a new class. So we've got our clicky class, it seems to be working fine. So we're going to come on down to a new class and we're going to create it. And this is going to be called MPC and it inherits from the object. Cool. And now we can go to define underscore underscore init underscore underscore. And we're going to give our characters or NPCs some properties. First one's obviously going to be self. Then we're going to say name. Then we're going to go with nice name. Then we're going to go with location. And we're going to say is active. Fairly simple, not overly complicated. So self.name equals name. Self dot nice name equals nice name self dot location equals location and self dot is active equals is active all beans next thing we need to do is define our avatars i.e the images that are going to be displayed on the screen when the character is in the same room as us so what we need to do is we need to create property property and we're going to say define avatar and this is going to be for self so the values that we need to know let's go into our variable define so we've got chapter sequence and location so we need to use all of those and we need to change this so that it actually says avatar otherwise i will forget and have problems later on so we need to declare we need to use the global variable of chapter we need to use the global variable of sequence and we need the global variable of location. Now we're going to define a whole bunch of strings, um, which our program is going to check whether these files exist or not. And then if they do or don't, then we will use them. So this is basically where we're going to say we can either have a default image for a character being in a room, or we can have a image for a specific chapter or we can have an image for a specific sequence in a chapter so it, we can go pretty in depth here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a string abtr we haven't created any of these files yet so don't panic if you don't know what we're talking about all we're doing is we're going to say eh, underscore that eh, underscore eh, no 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 underscore dot png and we're going to say dot formats open brackets self dot name and then we need to convert our integer chapter number into a string which is going to be the next value and then we can say location so we're checking in this string we are checking whether the character has a name chapter location file the next one we're going to create is avatars oh uh, mvtrs equals and we can actually just really just copy this and add new bits to it. Control C, Control V. So in this one, we want another value. So we're going to go with underscore like that. 
and the next value that we're going to add and we're going to add it after the chapter so it's going to be str the string of the integer sequence add a comma there like that so that's cool so now we're saying if there's one of the chapter if there's one of the sequence and the chapter and the location now we're going to control c this again control v this again this one's going to be uh we're going to just put a z in front of it um and actually we're going to call this an avatars because this is going to be the ones with animations in them so we're going to say uh, animated and the first one we just want to check two properties like that and the end of this file is always going to say annie so that we don't get any file name conflicts in this one we're just checking name and location that's cool so we're going to copy this and we'll paste it a couple more times so this one we just let's just give these different names like that just different uh, different properties okay so this one we want to add another one like that this one's going to check the string of the chapter again and then this one we're going to add two more and we're going to check the chapter and the sequence so let's just grab this text from here control c and control v there we go so now we've defined all of these strings so we're going to run through them and we're going to check it's obviously we want this one to be the perfect one to use because this is the one specific to the chapter and the sequence and the location for each character however if that doesn't exist then we can default to anvitar which checks the name chapter and location if that doesn't exist then we can just check if there's an animation for the character's name in the location if there isn't then we can check this one which is going to be a still image of the name string uh, chapter sequence and location if that doesn't exist then we're going to check this one and if none of them exist then we'll just put out an empty png it's cool it's cool cool beans right so now we need to say if renpy.loadable so we want to start off with the first one, A-N-V-T-R-S, and Vitars. And then we just say return. C, control, V. If not, L if. And then we can just copy and paste this bit, C, and control, V. And this time we're checking Anvitar. So we just delete the S from the end of that. And we just return that value. See, and now we can go return there. So now we're checking avatar with a Z. And now we're checking uh, just a normal avatar, which avatars. And then checking uh, AVTR. So those are all of our files and then we're just going to end up end off with that and we're going to say else return avatars forward slash empty dot png and we're going to create an empty png file for that very purpose a lot of stuff going on there but i assume that you all followed what i was doing and um, if you have any problems with that, by all means, ask what I've done in the comments below and I will try my best to explain it again in the next video. But uh, I think that about covers it for this one, guys. Thanks ever so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, subscribe, like and all that jazz, and I'll see you in the next one. But until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.